Welcome to the People and Performance Podcast, offering tips and expert insights into the strategic capabilities, behaviors, and results needed to grow and sustain employee performance. In this People and Performance Holiday Special, we offer up a montage of some awesome answers from past guests to this question, quote, in one minute or less, can you share one piece of advice or some direction you were given by a mentor, leader, or colleague that inspired you to perform at a higher level in your career, end quote. Had a lot of great answers to this, and we're excited to go forward with this. So my name is Chris Bjorling, and I am your podcast co-host and president of Fidel Inc. So since we started this podcast a couple of years ago, we've asked all of our guests this question. As this is the season of giving, we thought we'd share this time with you in this collation of a bunch of the most impressive answers and share them with you bundled and gift wrap just for you during this holiday season. Bill Benham and I hope you enjoy the special edition and it offers you some inspiration for the year ahead. And if you do benefit from the episode, please remember to show that holiday spirit by liking, commenting, and subscribing to the pod. Our first answer comes from Tia Graham, founder of Arrive at Happy and author of the book, Be a Happy Leader. One of my mentors sat down with me and actually gave me this leadership book and said, you are working really, 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 really hard. You are doing everything you know how to do, but I know that you can drive results faster. I know that you can achieve more. And this, this measurement tool that I shared truly changed my life because I stopped spinning my wheels and started being way more strategic. And I also created alignment. And so that, that piece, um, step six, which was when I was the director of sales and marketing of the W Hollywood hotel, um, Dan King was my mentor. He was the regional vice president. And that is just one that comes to mind that drastically shifted how I led and how my teams performed. The next answer to this question comes from Joey Price, entrepreneur, CEO at Jumpstart HR, AI Ethics Advisory Board member at Arena Analytics, and host of the awesome While We Were Working podcast. I have a mentor who was my first customer when I started my business, and I'll never forget his investment in me as a professional, um, but also my uh, personal and spiritual development as well. Um, and he had an office uh, in a local town near us, but he he relocated, and I had I had so been enthralled uh, walking into his office and seeing these different like posters that have value statements on them. And when he was moving, he no longer needed them, and so I grabbed one, and uh, it's a picture. I'm actually looking at it now because it's hanging up in the office. It's a picture of uh, a sunset over an ocean. And it says, after we've added value, then our day sunsets. And I've always held that belief that, you know, if you want to be the best, it's not just about, you know, clocking in and clocking out. Um, it's about finding the, the most impactful way to add value and using that as the the barrier or the the standard of when is my day over um so every day i'm looking to add value whether that's to my team members to our customers uh to our business and business processes and i think it's that that commitment it's that value um that has really helped create the the organization that i hope to lead and um has allowed me to be the professional that i hope to become Next up to share one piece of advice or some direction given by a mentor, leader, or colleague that inspired him to perform at a higher level in his career is Brad Fetterman, CEO at Performance Point LLC and author of Cultivating Culture, 101 Ways to Foster Engagement in 15 Minutes or Less. You know, I think the, the best advice I got from anyone was to focus on being yourself, to be authentic, to uh, not worrying about who's in the room, what their role is, how much money they make, how powerful they are, uh, that people respect and have confidence in people who show respect 
and have confidence. So be yourself, be authentic, be vulnerable, but be confident and along the way. I think that's probably the best advice I can give anyone. Most success in a career doesn't come from being awesome at something. It gets you in the door. And it might be good in the beginning of your career when you focus on technical skills. But as you grow in your career, the biggest thing that's going to put you ahead are your emotional is your emotional intelligence. And that's all about your people skills, blending thinking and feeling to make optimal decisions that drive better relationships and better results. Focusing on emotional intelligence and being yourself drives careers. That's the best advice anybody ever gave me. And, uh, and, I, and I've focused on it ever since. Chris and Bill had a blast chatting with Kathy Caprino, an internationally recognized career and leadership coach, writer, speaker, and educator dedicated to the advancement of women in business. Here's her answer. Yeah, I love this question. There were several um, pieces of advice, you know, I've been at it a long time here, but one that came up for me is actually this person was not the best leader or manager, but he said something that really struck me so hard that I wasn't aware of. He said, look, Kathy, your success at work and your career is not based on what you know and what you do. It's based on the relationships you've formed. And I remember really resisting that because I thought, what? I want to work in a meritocracy where it's what I'm doing that gets me noticed or moves me forward. But he was right. I realize now we literally can't do what we want to do. We can't achieve our biggest, juiciest goals without other people. And, you know, I've written a lot about this, about networking. And you know, networking can be kind of a dirty word for people. They think, oh, it's so transactional and I don't know how to do it or I'm, in, I'm an introvert and what, how am I going to, how am I going to reach out to someone on LinkedIn who I don't know? But I realize now mentors and sponsors, not just mentors, sponsors, and I want to make the differentiation, mentor is someone in your, in your sphere who you know, who is happy to offer you, you know, regular insights, advice, guidance. They're in the fabric of your life, right? But a sponsor is that plus they have clout and influence. They can open a door for you that you can't open yourself. And research has shown, I think it was Sylvia Ann Hewitt's research that showed that women have three times as many mentors, but men have twice as many sponsors. Sponsors have clout. And we need these people. We need a support community. When I look at everything that I've done that matters to me, other people helped me. So I would say start building your support community, a really robust community now. And you can start on LinkedIn. What a great place to do it. But you want people who are not just at your company. A lot of people tell me, I don't know anyone outside my company, IBM or GE, or they've been a place a long, long time. They should be inside your company, outside your company, and even in and outside your field. Start connecting with them. Uh, share a post of theirs. If you see something of mine, share it and tag the person and share your thought leadership. Wow, I really liked this piece because of this. It's time. It's time that you start building that network. In an episode called How to Build Success into Every Organizational Design, Karen Manja, VP of Customer and Market Insights at Salesforce, offered the following. I think about a life coach I've had since I was in university. And he is one of those people that somehow can stare into your soul and say to you what you need to hear. And I was at a crossroads feeling some of the burnout that we're talking about here and imagining a different construct of work and life. And I felt so stuck. You know, and when I look at it now, it was between doing what I felt I should do versus what I wanted to do, what was in alignment with my values and my higher purpose. And he listened to me recount my struggle and feeling stuck, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, hey, kid, this is not a dress rehearsal. You only get one life 
And the question is, how do you want to live it? In late 2022, Kevin Oakes appeared on the podcast. Kevin is CEO and co-founder of the Institute for Corporate Productivity, an authority on next practices in human capital. He is also the author of Culture Renovation. Here's Kevin's take on the question. Yeah, we um, a, a long time ago, I, I uh, learned about uh, open book management and just the importance of transparency. And we as a company uh, have been emulating open book management from the beginning. Uh, and what that means, Bill, is uh, once a month, uh, we get together as an organization and we go over all the financials of the company. Um, we've, te- we've taught people um, what EBITDA means and net income and look at a balance sheet. Uh, and we just want them to know how are we doing to plan, how, how are we doing versus last year, uh, et cetera. And then we go over all of our, our strategies, our product ideas, our research ideas, things that we're planning on going forward. I just find that to be an easier way um, to, to run a company, frankly, and, and just a more honest way to run it. Uh, everybody in my organization is an owner of the organization. They all have equity in the company. And so I want to treat them like owners. I want them to act like owners. Uh, and so that that's a learning I had from years and years ago and just the way I love to operate in business in general. Next up is Whitney Johnson, CEO of Human Capital Consultancy, Disruption Advisors. Whitney and her team are experts at helping people grow their people to grow their organization. Whitney is the award-winning author of Disrupt Yourself. Plus, she's a keynote speaker and a frequent lecturer for Harvard Business School's Corporate Learning. Here's Whitney's answer. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two. So um, the first one is Marshall Goldsmith, um, who is one of the, you know, he's coached over 150 CEOs, hugely, hugely in demand as a leadership coach. And he's been a wonderful um, mentor and influence for me. And he, he said to me a couple of years ago, very simple, very tactical, as you would expect from Marshall Goldsmith, you're not charging enough. And that, um, I think that was really important and really valuable because when you say to someone you're not charging enough, there's all sorts of information in there of like, well, why aren't you charging enough? And if you're not chart, you know, what, what are the reasons behind that? And what do you need to do? Because sometimes it's just a tactical, you need to charge more, but sometimes there's, there's the question of, well, if you're not charging enough, what's going on in your head that you believe that you shouldn't be charging as much as this person is recommending. So that's the first piece of advice that comes to mind. And the second one is not dissimilar. Um, uh, Bob Proctor, who was a wonderful um, influence for the past few years of his life, where I was on a panel with him at Junior Achievement speaking. And afterwards, he came up to me and said, you know, I think you're playing too small. You could play bigger and I want to help you. And so those are two pieces of advice of, you need to charge more and you're, you could play bigger. Important, important pieces of advice. And I think pretty much anybody who is being, um, you know, in the human capital field, um, I think when we're willing to utter those words of you could be more, you could play bigger, you should charge more, that's a gift that anybody who wants to develop human beings is, is a wonderful gift to be able to give. Our final soundbite comes from Jeff Summers, Managing Director at Genos North America. Together with Genos International, Genos North America supports Genos partners to make a real difference in organizations and in the lives of employees through emotional intelligence solutions that are game-changing for business. Here's Jeff's take on the question. Across the board for me, the first and foremost things is people that show up in a way, Bill, that are authentic and genuine and it, to me, it leads everything off, meaning people, and, and I think of a person going back, my mentor from back in the 90s that I used to golf with, this was a person that showed up in a very authentic, genuine, um, didn't take themselves too serious, coming back to some of the Brene Brown kind of thing. But I think truly for me as an individual, those people that I connect most with are people that I can trust and feel comfortable being myself around them, and then things can take off. But I think that's the first step, is really just being around people that are authentic and genuine and are real. And from there, it then opens the door to other types of things in the EI or any space of leadership. But I think for me, that's the first step, is is people just being able to be themselves and allowing me to be myself as I show up around them. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the People in Performance podcast. Follow us on social media and remember to subscribe.